My name is Cannabis Rollins. My journey is beginning. A journey that I hope will open the doors of life to me and link my past with my future. A journey that will bring me to a strange and dark place. From Hammerfell to Skyrim to a house called Rollinwood. A world that I have never known with people I have never met. People who tonight are still only shadows in my mind, but who will soon fill the days and nights of my tomorrow. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. All right, Bandit. We've done a little preparation for our next caper with the Thieves Guild. I now have a ebony greatsword. But let's go. Let's go and talk with Carlia and see what she wants. Brynjolf, the time has come to decide Mercer's fate. Until a new guildmaster is chosen, the decision the falls city to you. I lost, and I've come to a decision. Mercer Frey tried to kill both of you. He betrayed the guild, murdered Gallus, and made us question our future. What can I do for you, friend? You have to be very careful, Brynjolf. Mercer is a nightingale, an agent of Nocturnal. Then it's all true. Everything I heard in the stories. The Nightingales, their allegiance to Nocturnal, and the Twilight Sepulchre. Yes. That's why we need to prepare ourselves and meet Mercer on equal footing. Just outside of Riften, beyond the southeast gate is a small path cut Locked. up the mountainside. At the end of that path is a clearing, Could be and an old standing stone. One rusty I'd ask you both to meet me there. Right, very well, Carlyle. Is there anything else I should know? I'm preparing to leave for the Standing Stone. What is it? Nothing. Alright, where's the bandit we should go to? Alright, bandit, come on. Hmm? It. Actually, we're going to go back inside. All right, I don't know where my bed is. I should, uh, just need one good hole. It's this one. Yes. All right, I'm going to get some rest and get up when it's dark. Much better. Oh, look at these. Thieves Guild gloves. Let's see. What's so special about them? Nothing. All right. They're the same as the ones I'm already wearing. Well, I hope you got some rest. What can I do for you, friend? Follow me.
What can I do for you? Should have known she was lying. She said she'd wait for me. All right, let's go and get our horses. Protect yourself right. Buy armor from Grelka. Ugh, you. I presume you're bothering me for a good reason. No. I have no good reason Need to something. even look in your direction. Could be anyone's. Hmm? Okay. Vampire vision on. All right, let's go. Feels good to be out in the night air and not having the sun burning at my flesh. explosions. Here's Mark. Like I'm supposed to figure out which college he meant. Kill him to get some beer every now and then. They didn't put up much of a fight. No, they didn't. Looks like we've discovered something, though. Crypt of the Old Guard. All right, I'll have to come back here another time. I'm sure Carlia. Is waiting. Who's this? A Daedra worshipper. Now what? A spider? And how is that possible? That brat ain't mine. Could be anyone's. We'll get one rusty scepter from it. All right, let's keep going. Here's another one of those worshippers, I think. Two threes. What was he thinking? 
thinking. Who never saw me pull that ace out of my boot? are coming from we have a day drop and a fire mage Tire. Find the conjurer. There. I'll end your miserable life. All right, he's down. What else is out here? Why are you naked? of soul gem. <laughs> I'm surprised you survived without your armor. All right, I think I killed your horse. This is my fault. Wish I could turn wood to gold. Sorry for that.
All right, I thought there was another necromancer out here. I could be wrong. The Shadow Stone. And what does this do? Blur. Those under the sign of the Shadow move faster in combat, hide in shadows. They sneak much more effectively and inflict greatly increased sneak attack damage when near cover. It's interesting. Maybe another time. All right. Can I just drop down here? All right, Bandit, I'm not sure you can go with us. But maybe I should make sure that you're in a decent spot before I leave. done. So, we were attacked by a hag. All right. Let's keep moving. Shod Farm. Oh, where's the bandit? Oh, there he is. out of my food. All right. Here it is. Nightingale Hall. I'm glad you're here. What is the significance of this place? This is the headquarters of the Nightingales, cut into the mountainside by the first of our kind. We've come to seek the edge we need to defeat Mercer Frey. What kind of an edge? If you'll follow me, I'll try to explain on the way. First, tell me more about the Nightingales. Gallus, Mercer Frey and I were once members of what's known as the Nightingale Trinity. The Trinity disbanded 25 years ago when Mercer Frey betrayed us by slaying Gallus and dumping his body in the ruins of Snowvale Sanctum. Were they part of the Thieves' Guild? Indirectly. The Trinity is usually selected from the ranks of the Guild, although its existence is a closely guarded secret. And what is their purpose? The Nightingales protect the Temple of Nocturnal, a place known as the Twilight Sepulchre. Mm, that's certainly a tongue twister. 
And who is Nocturnal? She's the mistress of night and darkness, and the patron of every thief in Tamaril. I've never met a thief that worshipped anything. Nocturnal isn't one for worship and reverence. There are no priests and no sermons, no services, and no arms. She influences our luck, and in return, demands payment. Sounds like a guild contract. You're closer to understanding than you realize. The only difference is she doesn't demand payment in the traditional sense, and sometimes the cost can be quite high. Whether you know it or not, Nocturnal dictates how well we perform as rogues. I have my skill. And my supernatural abilities. Again, you have to think differently. Haven't you ever noticed how our luck behaves? Like a novice picking an impossible lock? Or a blind man suddenly turning to face you as you reach for his pocket? It's through these subtle means that Nocturnal influences us. Sounds like she just likes us to suffer. Nocturnal's whim is the greatest mystery to everyone. There have been volumes written on the subject. Does she accept payment when we die? When we suffer, does she revel in our misery? No one knows. The return certainly seems worth the risk, though. So, am I to become a Nightingale? It's my hope that you will, yes. This way, please. All right, Bandit. Stay out of trouble and get some clothes. I know she was lying. She said she'd wait for me. Ah. It came inside. I didn't think he was welcome here. Interesting. All right. So this is Nightingale Hall. I heard about this place when I joined the guild, but I never believed it existed. The assumption that the Nightingales were just a little seed within the guild on purpose. It helped divert attention from our true nature. Bandit. What's wrong with him? I'm gonna need to listen to what she has to say. Wait here. As you say. Certainly not religious. Why pick me? This isn't about religion, anymore. It's business. This is Nightingale Hall. You're the first of the uninitiated to set foot inside in over a century. Now, if you'll both proceed to the armory to don your Nightingale armor. We can begin the Earth. Wait. Someone's bed. There's someone who's sleeping here? Oh, and what's this? A skill book. Interesting. I did not know that about pickpocketing. I will certainly add this to my repertoire. Hmm, I wonder who stays here. Well, now. Don't you two look like you're ready for a costume party?
So what happens if I don't put on the costume? is a little confining. All right. Okay, lass. We've got these get-ups on. Now what? Beyond this gate is the first step in becoming a Nightingale. Whoa there, lass. I appreciate the armor, but becoming a Nightingale? That was never discussed. To hold any hope of defeating Mercer, we must have Nocturnal at our backs. If she's to accept you as one of her own, an arrangement must be struck. What sort of arrangement? I need to know the terms. The terms are quite simple, Grignold. Nocturnal will allow you to become a Nightingale and use your abilities for whatever you wish. And in return, both in life and in death, you must serve as a guardian of the Twilight Sepulchre. Aye, there's always a catch. But at this point, I suppose there isn't much to lose. If it means the end of Mercer Frey, you can count me in. What about you? <laughs> Are you ready to transact the oath with Nocturnal? I'm not sure I understand the terms. By transacting the oath with Nocturnal, you're entering into a business deal. You'll be provided all of the power and knowledge befitting a Nightingale. You're free to use those powers as you see fit, to further your own goals, or the goals of the Thieves' Guild. And in return? In return, you will be required to defend the Twilight Sepulchre and everything within when the need arises. More importantly, upon your death, your spirit will be bound to the Twilight Sepulchre as one of its guardians. Hmm. It's an interesting arrangement, especially since I'm undead. So, I take it that there's no going back. Once the oath has been struck, the terms are binding. Knowing this, are you ready to undergo the ceremony? Mm, certainly, but I'm not sure how it's going to work out for Nocturnal. <laughs> Good. After I open the gate, please stand on the circle. you, Lady Nocturnal, Queen of Murk, and Empress of Shadow, hear my voice. Ah, Carlia. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. Lose something, did we? My lady, I've come before you to throw myself upon your mercy and to accept responsibility for my failure. You're already mine. Your terms were struck long ago. What could you possibly offer me now? I have two others that wish to transact the oath, to serve you both in life and in death. You surprise me, Caroline. This offer is definitely weighted in my favor. 
My appetite for Mercer's demise exceeds my craving for wealth and place. Revenge. How interesting. Very well. The conditions are acceptable. You may proceed. Lady Nocturnal, we accept your terms. We dedicate ourselves to you as both your Avengers and your Sentinels. We will honor our agreement in this life and the next until your conditions have been met. Very well. I name your initiates Nightingale, and I restore your status to the same, Carlisle. And in the future, I'd suggest you refrain from disappointing me again. Well, that was interesting. Now that you've transacted the oath, it's time to reveal the final piece of the puzzle to you. Mercer's true crime. <laughs> you are so full of secrets, Carlia. You're telling me, after all that we've gone through, that there's still more. Mercer was able to unlock the guild vault without two keys because of what he stole from the Twilight Sepulchre. The skeleton key. By doing this, he's compromised our ties to Nocturnal, and in essence, caused our luck to run dry. So, the key unlocks any door. Well, yes. But the key isn't only restricted to physical barriers. All of us possess untapped abilities. The potential to wield great power securely sealed within our minds. Once you realize the key can access these traits, the potential becomes limitless. The three of us could keep it. And now I understand how he was able to open that puzzle door. I'm afraid that's impossible. If the key isn't returned to its lock in the Twilight Sepulchre, things will never be the same for the Guild. As time passed, our luck would diminish to the point of non-existence. And whether you know it or not, our uncanny luck defines our trade. Well, as a thief, I must say that this would be the first time that I ever set out to return something. Very true. In our line of work, it's quite rare we set out to return a stolen item to its rightful owner. All right then, let's go. Before we depart, Brynjolf has some business to discuss. I suggest you listen to him. Listen, lad. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go after Mercer. The leadership of the guild. Really? And why tell this to me? Carlia and I had a long discussion before you arrived here. Thanks to your efforts, Mercer's treachery has been exposed. After we deal with him, all that remains is restoring the guild to its full strength. As a result, we both feel that you have the potential of replacing Mercer as leader of the Thieves' Guild. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do have the potential to replace him. I've been at this game a long time, my friend. A long time. I've stolen trinkets from nobles and framed priests for murder. I'm good at what I do, maybe even one of the best, but it's all I know. I've never been one to lead, never desired it, never cared for it, don't want it. It's about time you asked. Ha! <laughs> Spoken like the leader of the Thieves' Guild. Just don't lose yourself in the role. We have a bit of an errand to run before your coronation. Well... There's only one condition. As leader of the Thieves' Guild, killing is now in season. Then it's decided. When this is all over and Delvin's contacts assure me that we've regained our footing in Skyrim, we'll handle the details. Until then, we have quite the task ahead. Then let's get to it. 
I've been poring over the plans you brought us, and I'm convinced the eyes of the Falma are in the Dwarven ruins at Urkenthat. Carlia and I will meet you there. Prepare yourself, lad. This will be a fight to remember. Very well. So it looks like we're nightingales. Aye. And some of what Carlia said is starting to make sense. Mercer may have damaged our reputation and raided our coffers, but this goes well beyond even his twisted form of larceny. Old Delvin kept calling it a curse, and we all laughed at him. Looks like the joke's on us. Do you think you stand a chance against Mercer? If you would have asked me that yesterday, I'd have said no. But now I think our chances have improved. Look, call me crazy if you like, but I trust Carlia. I don't think she'd lead us down a suicidal path. Besides, I'd rather die with some of Mercer's blood on my blade than spend the rest of my life regretting that I ran the other way. <laughs> I really didn't need the powers of Nocturnal to kill Mercer. But I'm no fool. I'll take every advantage I can get. Until next we meet, lad. <laughs> I don't even need to disguise myself in their presence. They're so far under my control. <laughs> me that planted the suggestion in their mind to make me the leader of the Thieves Guild. <laughs> Imagine that, a vampire leading the Thieves Guild. Ah, oh, Mercer. Soon. Your time will come. Is there anything back here I should know about? More sleeping quarters. really doesn't say much about the nightingales. It's run down. I mean, in many ways, it's almost worse than a vampire's lair. Just minus the blood, and the bones, and the flesh. So, Carlia, mm -hmm. I don't feel stronger. With the skeleton key missing from the Twilight Sepulchre, I'm afraid Mercer's seen to it that none of us can benefit from Nocturnal's gifts. But she spoke to us. You merely transacted the oath, signed the unwritten contract with Nocturnal. In order for us to receive our abilities, our end of the bargain, I'm afraid the key must be returned. Then Nocturnal is angry? At you? If Nocturnal was truly displeased with me, with any of us, she wouldn't have answered my call. I have no doubt that we still hold her favor, and I believe it gives us enough of an edge to defeat Mercer Frey. I'm curious, may I ever return to this Nightingale Hall? Yes. Now that you're a Nightingale, you may consider this your home. You'll find that this place offers many things that will help you in your endeavors, as well as a wealth of information for you to learn. Once the Skeleton Key has been restored to the Twilight Sepulchre, 
I'll make this place my home as well. Well, I certainly hope you'll fix it up. This is disgusting and disgraceful that you would live in conditions like this. Are you two just going to stand there? Is there more that must be said? Brynjolf? Sorry, Lark. I've got important things to do. We'll speak another time. Very well. Then I will see you all later. Bandit. And you're mm -hmm. still not dressed. Follow Excellent. me. We have some preparations to make for our confrontation with Mercer Frey. <laughs>